around the world occupy about one third of Earth's land. The rise of these mysterious and fascinating forests on planet Earth has a long history. Nearly 420 billion years ago, when the Earth was evolving, the ancient plants and anthropods began to inhabit the land. Slowly and steadily, over millions of years that followed, these land colonizers developed and adapted to their new habitat, creating the first forests. The first forests were dominated by giant horse tails, club mosses and ferns that measured up to 40 feet tall. Life was continuously evolving on Earth. During the Ice Age, the landscape of Earth again went through a transformation and the surface of the planet that had been dominated by tropical forests for millions of years changed. This resulted in the spread of temperate forests in the Northern Hemisphere. The forest biomes are largely classified according to the seasons and they mainly depend on the type of climate. Today, the three major types of forests that habitat the earth and classified according to the latitude are Tropical forests These forests are spread across tropical zone 23.5 degrees north to 23.5 degrees south. Temperate forests. These forests can be found between 23 and a half degrees north to 66 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees south to 66 and a half degrees south. Boreal forests or taiga. These are found around 66 and a half degrees north to south poles. The term temperate forest is very broad. It covers the forests found between the tropical and subtropical regions and the barren treeless lands of the far north and extreme south. Here the season goes from warm summer to cool winter and back again forming a cycle. The parts of the world that follow this cycle are called temperate. The forests that grow in temperate countries combined together make up the world's temperate forest biome. The eastern USA is entirely covered with temperate forest. The average yearly temperature is at least 24 degrees Celsius but can be as high as 30 degrees Celsius depending on the forest altitude. Humidity here is 60 to 80 percent. One of the most interesting features of the temperate forest is its changing season. Temperate forests are also known as four season forests. The four seasons are winter, spring, summer and fall. The temperate forests are located roughly midway between the tropics and the poles. The climate here is neither too hot nor too cold. So, while the temperate climate is unpredictable, it is fairly comfortable for most of the year. The seasons change the look of temperate forests every few months. During winters, forests may look rather lifeless. Most wildlife hides from the cold or flies far away to warmer places. As the spring arrives, days begin to lengthen and get warmer. Wildlife slowly returns and new leaf and flower buds appear on deciduous trees. The vegetation gets abundant sunlight to flourish. Insects hatch and become food for many returning birds and awakening rodents and reptiles. In summer, the forest is green and food is plentiful. Woodland animals have babies. The forest is awake and busy during the day and night. As the season of fall arrives, daylight shortens and temperatures fall. Now the plants do not get enough water required by them and this affects their growth. They stop growing. The word deciduous comes from Latin and means to fall down, which is exactly what the leaves in a deciduous forest do. First, they change colors and then they fall all over the ground. Deciduous trees reduce the amount of green chlorophyll in their leaves. 
the leaves turn orange, yellow, red and brown. As the season progresses, softest stemmed plants die. Many trees lose their leaves completely and become skeletons. As the leaves of the trees begin to die and fall, the entire forest of eastern North America is a spectacular display of color. These lively colors are the colors of dying leaves. Falling leaves create thick leaf litter on the forest floor that will be recycled into soil. Animals store nuts and other food resources for the winter when there will be very little food. Animals living in the temperate forests are also affected due to the change in the season. They are left with nothing to eat and they have no choice but to leave or go underground. The plants and trees are just waiting for days to get longer and warmer. That is, they are waiting for the arrival of summer so that life in the forest can start all over again. It is just a matter of time. There are many types of temperate forests. The kind of forest that can grow depends on local soils, temperatures and rainfall. For example, in southern Europe, Long hot summers encourage the growth of a special kind of vegetation called the Mediterranean scrublands. Although they rarely grow thickly enough to be called a true forest, the trees in the Mediterranean scrublands include small oaks and pines. A characteristic tree of these lands is the cork oak, which occurs naturally but is planted for its valuable bark. Mediterranean scrublands are rich in wildflowers and birds, especially insect-eating birds which are abundant in summer. One of the most spectacular birds found here is azure-winged magpie. Both temperate forest grows in the eastern North America, Europe and eastern Asia. Temperate forests include a mix of trees that belong to three main groups. They are the deciduous trees, coniferous trees and broad-leaved evergreens. The deciduous forests have big, thin-skinned leaves which allow them to absorb maximum sunlight. These leaves are delicate and vulnerable to winter winds, frost and snow. In autumn, the leaves turn beautiful shades of red, orange and yellow before they drop off the trees. Common deciduous trees are the oak, elm and beech. Others are maple, lime and chestnut. Coniferous trees have seeds that develop in cones. These trees have adapted to the surroundings and usually have needles for leaves. These needles stop the snow to accumulate over the tree. The trees lose the needles gradually so that the trees never bear. Coniferous trees are also called evergreens because they are green all the time. They are usually found at high altitudes. Pines, firs and cedars are examples of coniferous trees. Broadleaf evergreens grow in temperate forests in warm parts of the world like New Zealand, Australia, Southwest South America and the Mediterranean. These trees have flat leathery leaves. These trees do not lose their leaves in the winter. The leaves are waxy which helps keep them from losing too much water in winter when the air is dry. Olive Holly, tea and eucalyptus trees are all broad-leaved evergreens. Like all living things, deciduous trees and plants have special adaptations to stay alive. Summer is a busy time for deciduous trees. Their broad leaves capture energy from the sun and convert it to food by photosynthesis. Some of the food is used for growth and some is stored in the roots for next spring. They are also pigments known as chromoplasts. Actually, these colors were present in the leaves all year long. 
but had been hidden by the green pigment of the chlorophyll. To prepare for winter, deciduous trees and plants become dormant. They lose their leaves and seal the places where leaves were attached with a protective covering called a leaf scar. If they kept their leaves, the water in the leaves would freeze into ice, damaging the leaves and leaving the plant vulnerable to bacteria or fungi. Plants also make a concentrated sugar solution to stop water from freezing in their stems. The longer days and warmer weather of spring signal to the trees to grow new leaves and begin photosynthesis again. But in some temperate countries, instead of winter frost, there is enough rain. Here, the trees don't shed their leaves and continue growing even in winter, giving rise to what is known as temperate evergreen rainforest. These temperate evergreen rainforests are found in New Zealand and Tasmania. The parts of southeast Australia experience less rain, resulting in long summer droughts. Not all the trees can survive here. Only the evergreen trees that have leathery leaves can survive this harsh condition. This forest formed by such evergreen trees is called evergreen temperate forest. Temperate forests which once covered the eastern North America and parts of Canada and Quebec are now gone. But those forests that have survived have become world famous for their splendid leaf colors that appear in autumn. One typical example of these is the leaves of maple trees. Coming towards the North American temperate forests, we will find different species of animals and plants which add beauty and richness to the already scenic forest. Most of the eastern USA is covered by the Appalachian Mountains. They extend from Newfoundland, Canada and in south to Atlanta, Georgia. The southern part of this mountain supports more than 130 species of trees and more than 1,500 species of wildflowers. The American temperate forest biome can be experienced closely along the Appalachian Trail, which is the longest footpath in the world, extending more than 3,360 kilometers. Located in the northern end of the Appalachian Trail is the mountain Katahdin that has temperate deciduous forests mixed with evergreen taiga forest. In Kansas City, however, the original temperate forests are faded into dry prairie grasslands. The formation of the earth is such that most of the land is concentrated in the northern hemisphere, while southern hemisphere is covered mostly with oceans. Northern hemisphere has great land mass which forms an almost continuous ring around the planet, surrounded with icy tundra and the dark taiga forests of Scandinavia, northern Russia, Siberia, Alaska and Canada. To the south of Tega region lies the temperate zone, which extends over a large area of land covering most of the USA, southern Canada, central and eastern Asia, and Europe. In the southern hemisphere, however, the terrain and climate makes the most of the area unsuitable for forests. This is the Western North America. The mountains here extending along the Pacific Ocean act as a barrier and stop the moist air blowing from the ocean so the area to the east of mountains does not get rains. Therefore, much of this area is desert. This region is known as the Great Basin. It is cut off in the east by yet more mountain range of the Rockies. While across the Atlantic Ocean, in Europe, there are no mountain ranges to act as barriers. The blowing moist ocean winds make the climate wet enough for temperate forests to develop across a major part of the region. In Ireland and Western Scotland, there is enough rain throughout the year to support the temperate evergreen forest. But these countries lie too far north and temperate evergreen trees cannot survive there. 
the cool soils here become waterlogged and with no air the dead plants build up into masses of dead matter called peat bogs these bogs once extended in large areas of ireland and scotland as we come towards the north this temperate forest transforms into taiga in winter it has the maximum rainfall and the season of summer is dry with no rainfall This climate favors only those trees that have tough leathery leaves. These leaves can carry out tasks efficiently in winter and during summer it can even resist dry. As we move towards the eastern side of Europe just beyond the Volga river we find the influence of Atlantic Ocean gradually fading off. The rainfall is insufficient here and temperate forests spread out forming dry temperate grasslands. These grasslands of Asia are known as steppes and it extends across the heart of Asia to central China. To the north we find the taiga forest and the south is a mass of desert. being far away from the ocean and not being affected by it this northern desert and steppe is dry as a bone in summer and bitterly cold in winter the steppes and the deserts are amongst the last wildernesses on the earth the icy highlands of tibet that lies further east open up to the peaks and valleys of central chinese hill ranges The temperate zone here comes under the influence of winds blowing from Pacific Ocean. The climate is mild with enough rainfall for the forests to again grow in this area. This East Asian region extends up to Siberian border and through Korea to Japan. Let us now know about the forests of Europe. Do you know that the only fragments of the original wild forest remains in Europe? Originally, the first settled farmers in the Stone Age had cut the temperate deciduous forest and managed for future use. But crowded countries like United Kingdom have lost most of their forest and only fragments remain in thinly populated countries like Romania. Forests of Eastern Europe are dying out due to acid rains. The acid rains come from pollution emitted from factories and power stations. Situated on the border between Poland and Belarus, the Białowieża forest is the unique area of wilderness. It is the part of the original untamed forest that covered Europe from the Atlantic Ocean to the Ural Mountains. Białowieża is famous for bison, elks, beavers, lynx and wolves. Coming towards the Atlantic Ocean, the warm currents create mild climate of western Europe. Here, the temperate forests are largely found in southern Sweden till as far as Alaska. Dividing the deciduous temperate forests of the central Europe is the Pyrenees. This mountain barrier divides the deciduous temperate forests of central Europe from the hot dry Mediterranean shrublands of Spain and Portugal. Centered in the Harz mountains is the Obi Harz nature reserve. This place has dense forests that once covered central Germany. Many of its trees are damaged by acid rains. Alps mountains have prevented plants from spreading hence many plants have become extinct in these areas Towards the northern edge of temperate forest zone is Moscow the taiga region begins from this place It is tough time surviving for the trees of the world's biggest forest trees like oaks beeches and maples are the world's biggest temperate forests They are deciduous and they cope up with winter by shedding their leaves in autumn and growing new leaves in spring. The plants of these forests survive as roots, bulbs or seeds, ready to shoot up from the ground in spring. The plants get energy through simple chemical process by which they absorb air through leaves and spread it till the roots. 
This process of generating energy is in the presence of sunlight. These are all adaptations of leaves. The more light a leaf can collect, the better. So the best shape for the leaf is broad and flat. Besides absorbing energy, leaves have other functions. Each leaf has tiny holes or pores known as stomata that let water evaporate and drift away. This process of evaporation, also known as transpiration, makes the leaf suck more water through its stomach. This in turn pulls water from the tree's twigs and branches and up through its trunk from the roots. The water carries vital chemicals which the tree needs for making food and energy. So the leaves are not only energy collecting souls but also power pumps that allow the trees to collect chemicals from the ground. Around equator, where the climate is always warm and wet, leaves are thick and strong and usually keep working for full year. The trees that carry this type of leaves are broad-leaved evergreen trees. In temperate regions, with harsh winters and frost, the plants keep themselves up by filling with water. And when water turns into ice, it expands and takes more space. But the plants of this region defend themselves through strong wood stems and extra tough leaves that can survive frost. In Europe, most of the oaks, elms, beeches, chestnuts and other trees turn brown or yellow. But in England and Japan, the color of maples turns bright gold and red. Within a short span of time, the lush green forests become bare and the ground is covered with a thick layer of multicolored leaves that have fallen from the trees. But the trees have to survive the season without leaves. They have to store their energy for spring when a whole new set of leaves are formed and they prepare for this beforehand. Before autumn, each tree has already made the leaves for spring. These leaves are tightly packed in the frost-proof buds on every live twig. When the warm weather returns, the buds only have to pop open to allow the new leaves to unfurl, start growing and working. The deciduous trees are the biggest plants in the temperate forest, but the undergrowth plants outnumber them. These plants are not strong enough like the trees and the winter frost destroys them. But the interesting part is that the plants are not dead. As long as their roots are in good shape, they can survive. It's just that they shut down for a while. When the spring arrives, New green shoots sprout among the thick layer of fallen leaves on the forest floor which acts as a blanket against freezing cold temperatures. The plants that die in winter but survive underground are known as herbaceous plants. When the trees are still without leaves in early spring, small plants get a chance to grow, flower and spread beneath the trees. This creates some of the most spectacular flower shows on the earth. As the summer starts to approach, the spring flowers have to race against other trees to set their seeds because early summer sunlight will soon be blocked by the spread of leaves of forest trees. Some plants that survive in the shadow of huge trees have broad leaves that gather as much light as possible for the plants to make food. Some plants growing in shade have even found a much easier way to get food that is, to steal it. They are the parasitic plants. They penetrate their curly twigs into the stem of other plants and directly absorb the prepared food. Cow wheat is delicate looking flower plant that grows in European forests. This plant attaches its roots to the other plants and steals their sugary sap. It lives off on food prepared by other plants. Such plants are called parasites. Fungus is a strange organism that is expert at getting food without light. It is made of chitin, a material that forms hard outer casing of insects. Fungi, which are various sorts of mushrooms, eat sugar from decaying wood, dead plants and animals. 
some fungi repay the plants by supplying certain substance that plants cannot get from the soil by themselves. These kind of plants that repay are known as saprophytic plants. Many plants in temperate forests rely on these for survival. If their seedlings are planted in the soil that does not contain the right sort of fungus, they keen over and die. Lots of effort goes in producing seeds by the plants, but not all seeds are lucky enough to get a chance to grow. The ground is too crowded for them to squeeze in. The big trees block sunlight and the little ones do not get enough sunlight to start growing. Their break comes when a huge tree is blown away by the wind in a storm. The vacant space created by the blown away tree brings in the desired sunlight and the correct opportunity the seeds had been waiting for. Some seeds are viable even for 100 years. They remain dormant and on getting favorable conditions, they germinate. The fast breeding plants like foxglove and willow harp become the first to grow. In weeks time, the bare ground is thick with these plants and their flowers form a bright splash of sunlit color in the forest for a long period of one or two years. Other seeds that have been blown into this open land also sprout. They grow up to be birch trees. And after a few years, the young birch trees shade out the earlier arrivals and grow into a small birch thicket. But their domination is short-lived. And as the time passes, they give way to trees such as oaks, maples and tulip trees. And in this manner, after many many years, the wound caused by the blowing of the tree heals and the forest returns to its previous form of lush green temperate forest. Temperate forests have a moderate climate. They are home to many plant and animal species. Much of the food humans eat is grown in areas where temperate forests have been cleared and farms now exist. If you don't live in the tropics, chances are a temperate forest once was growing where you are right now. Temperate forests are also where many of our favorite foods first came from. Walnuts, apples, mushrooms and maple sugar are all foods of the temperate forest. In temperate forests, litter is a good thing. Fallen leaves create leaf litter. Leaf litter is one of the most important parts of the temperate forest. This is where the forest recycles most of its nutrients. Inside and beneath this leaf litter, thousands of small animals live, including many invertebrates like beetles, millipedes, centipedes and ants. Unseen microscopic creatures such as fungi and bacteria live there too. All these organisms help break the leaf litter into nutrients other plants and animals can use. In this manner, they return the nutrients back into the soil.